Well, the Ukrainians certainly are concerned about some of the things that have been going on in the U.S., especially in Congress there. And certainly they do rely very heavily on U.S. security assistance. And we've seen it on the battlefield here in the east of the country and in the south as well, pretty much in all facets. It starts with rifles. It starts with bullets. But then you also have larger cannons, ammunition, and all the way to surface-to-air missile systems. So the U.S. is by far the largest provider of arms to the Ukrainians uh, that they then use on the battlefield. So that's very important to them. But there's a second facet to this as well, and that is the possible chilling effect that any sort of cut in U.S. security assistance could have on the U.S.'s partners who are also giving weapons to Ukraine. There's two big examples. For instance, the Germans gave multiple rocket launching systems to the Ukrainians, but only did so after the U.S. also gave MLRS to the Ukrainians and also main battle tanks. The Germans allowing other countries to give Leopard 2 main battle tanks to Ukraine, doing the same as well. But again, only after a deal was reached with the Biden administration for the Biden administration to provide Abrams main battle tanks to the Ukrainians. So certainly it could be a huge deal if the U.S. decides to curtail their security assistance uh, for Ukraine or stop it altogether. Again, the Ukrainians very much aware of that. It's quite interesting because a spokesman for Ukraine's foreign ministry came out today trying to put a good face on things, saying, that, look, in the end, he hopes that they will be able to work with the Biden administration to make sure that any future budget will be beneficial for Ukraine. Fred Plekin, CNN in eastern Ukraine. And if the U.S. fails to get this out of the Congress and over to the Ukrainians, isn't that a win for Putin? Doesn't that bail out uh, Vladimir Putin? I mean, the Ukrainians have had him up against the ropes for some time now. I mean, this was all supposed to be over months ago from their point of view in the Kremlin. And uh, this would just come at a perfect time for Vladimir Putin and just bail him out, wouldn't it? Yeah, well, I'd, I'd, I'd go one step further than that, uh, Jim. I would say that it already has been a win for Putin and those who think like him. They have seen the turmoil and the dysfunction in our government in several ways. Uh, this is just the latest one. So they are continuing to use that mantra among some of our allies to say, the United States is not dependable. You should not trust them as your allies. You should trust us. And in fact, it may give Mr. Putin, and I'm sure it has, if I were a political leader, I would say this is a perfect opportunity to continue to try and extend this conflict uh, more and more. And, and it's going to be difficult, but I think part of Mr. Putin's strategy is to make this a frozen conflict like he's done in four other nations in Europe. So yeah, I think it certainly does help him, but I think more importantly, it shows the world that uh, there are times when we can't be depended upon because we're leaning toward autocrats and dictators.